Several states have been pushing for abortion bans since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. CBS News reporter Kate Smith spoke with Nancy Northup from the Center for Reproductive Rights to answer some of your questions. Eight lawsuits had to be filed because there was uncertainty about whether there would be abortion access in those states or in some cases, as in Texas, it really did shut down altogether for much of three weeks. So it was very difficult for patients and providers to know what the legal situation was. And if I'm not mistaken, ever since abortion was legalized in 1973 with Roe v. Wade, you've never seen a state just completely halt abortion services. Is that right? Yeah, we have never had the situation that we have had now with the coronavirus crisis where states and Texas was the leading example, just absolutely said you can't have access to abortion care in our state. Well, one thing I've noticed about this list of states that we've gone over, and there's there's a few more that I want to touch on, is that these are states that have historically passed restrictions that have made access to abortion more difficult. That's right. I Every state that is pushing and trying to shut down abortion care during the coronavirus crisis has had a long agenda of trying to do this. No other state except those that have always tried to restrict abortion access are doing this. You look to other states and they are letting abortion care go forward. They understand its essential services. And you know, these are states like New York that are at the heart uh, of the, the crisis. And then you also look at what the medical experts say. The American Medical Association has said these are not good policies. Abortion is essential health care. These are not addressing the coronavirus crisis. Does blocking reproductive rights during the pandemic make it more likely Roe v. Wade will be relitigated by the Supreme Court? Well, what it makes likely is that a case could get to the Supreme Court. In fact, during the battle in Texas, when the state was trying so hard to close the clinics, we actually, the litigators got to the point where we filed for emergency action by the Supreme Court, um, ended up getting resolved, and so withdrew that. But one of these cases, were the state to keep fighting it, could end up before the Supreme Court because, again, this is a type of, of uh, restriction that the states have tried for a long time, which is unjustified medical restrictions. The Supreme Court has already said you can't use unjustified medical restrictions to shut down clinics. So it is possible that it could end up before the Supreme Court. All right, CBS News reporter Kate Smith joins us now with more on her interview. Uh, and so we got those questions, uh, Kate, you did from Twitter, and you spoke to Nancy Northup um, in answering some of those questions from viewers uh, from social media about abortions and the ban. I want to know what some of the more frequent questions you received were. Well, Vlad, ever since states have begun to restrict access to abortion and in some cases even ban abortion completely, my Twitter has been completely flooded with patients who have asked me whether or not they can get an abortion in their state. Now, I should mention, I don't have a lot of followers on Twitter, but it was really interesting. And I think it was representative of this large confusion that you saw on the ground from patients who simply did not know whether or not they had access to abortion in their state. And that's why I really reached out to Nancy Northup. She's the CEO and president of the Center for Reproductive Rights to try to answer some of those questions and figure out for those patients on the ground, removing abortion from, you know, talking about politics, whether or not this medical service is still available in these states. So, you know, when you talk to her, she said that uh, these bans are unprecedented, but we've been talking about the push um, across the country in many states to severely restrict abortion access. So can you just remind us about what the states were doing before and why the pandemic um, was a perfect opportunity for them to push a little harder? I'm so glad you asked that, Anne-Marie, because what happened, you know, in the past month is so different than all of the other abortion restrictions that you and I often talk about on CBSN. So what actually happened in the past month is they were able to successfully completely shut down abortion care. Now, last year, when we were talking about all of those six-week bans on abortion, none of those were actually able to be implemented. So what you instead saw was just a legal battle that would continue, and ideally for those state officials, go all the way to the Supreme Court. Now, what's so different with this case 
is that these bans were actually implemented while the Center for Reproductive Rights, Planned Parenthood, and state officials were battling it out in court. Now, what happened was is that you would get one ruling from a federal appeals court and then a different ruling from a district court, which would effectively just kind of create this legal whiplash where, you know, one day abortion would be allowed, the second day it wouldn't be, and then again, you know, the third day, all of a sudden it's available again. And so, you know, as a reporter, it's very difficult to, you know, follow these. And, I, you know, I spoke to the lawyers. They said it was difficult to follow these. But for patients on the ground, you know, it's even more difficult to understand, you know, you have a patient, you know, if you have an appointment tomorrow, whether or not that appointment is still on. Mm. So, uh, Kate, we saw Texas officially resume all abortion procedures. Uh, where are we with other states that tried to impose similar restrictions? So most states right now have full access to abortion care. Now, there are a few exceptions, and there are obviously a few cases that are making their way through the court. So those things could change. Now, one I wanted to touch on was Arkansas. Now, in Arkansas, medication abortion is allowed, but that is the only method. Now, why that's important to note is because uh, medication abortion only works up until 10 weeks of a pregnancy. I should say it's only allowed up until 10 weeks uh, to a pregnancy. So if you are past that, if you gestationally pass that, Abortion is no longer available to you in Arkansas. Now, like you mentioned, Texas, uh, now abortion is fully allowed. However, lawyers are a little bit wary that that might change soon, depending on how the, uh, the AG's office interprets the new executive order. And then last night, we saw a judge in Ohio extend the preliminary injunction in that state. So news as of last night, abortion in Ohio continues to be available and will be protected for a few weeks longer. So then do we think that perhaps what's happened in Texas may have an impact on what's happening in other states and we could see restrictions and, and, and bans dropped? I think that's exactly what abortion rights activists are concerned about, because in Texas, you saw that case go almost all the way to the Supreme Court. The Center for Reproductive Rights, Nancy, who we spoke to, filed for an emergency action to the Supreme Court, which shows you kind of how fast moving this is and how a precedent could be easily created that states are allowed to restrict abortion. However, because we have seen so many courts say that this is, you know, it's unconstitutional regardless of the you know magnitude of the public health crisis that we are in right now you cannot curtail certain constitutional amendments so what we're seeing is mostly courts do agree with my parenthood center for reproductive rights that you can't do this however there's still a few threads that we need to watch out for because if those are upheld by uh, some federal appeals courts which have largely been successful for those states who are looking to ban abortion, you could see a precedent created such that states are allowed to temporarily restrict abortion access during public health crises like the one we're in today. All right, Kate, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.